So many different storylines for the drivers coming out here. This uh, first of two races here, the Cooper Tires Grand Prix of Mid-Ohio for USF Pro 2000. All these drivers chasing Miles Rowe in the championship fight. Michael Orlando from the pole needs a big race win. They're lining themselves up out of the final quarter into the start box, and we are green, green, green. Orlando with a solid jump coming down under the Cooper tire bridge into turn number one. Kiko Porto will slide over from his right to left to get in there right on the gearbox as they work their way out of one up into turn number two. You'll see them fan out and unlike USF 2000, no dust up in the gravel trap at all. Everybody clean and green through turn number one. Low line down the bottom. Orlando will cover off the inside. One driver locking it up further back but otherwise the battle sees Joel Grandforce on the outside. He's trying to get a run. He moves to the inside as well. Grandforce alongside his teammate Salvador and Diablo Rusty they're coming to you three wide coming to me right now they're still two wide in front Grandforth trying to get there Tom they're coming at you yep it is two wide for second and third right now cars touch one car two cars go off but get back on but one of them comes back on right in front of another car that is the car of Kiko Porto now we've got one two more cars that have spun here Kiko Porto winds up in a situation there, has been able to continue on, but we've got the 55 uh, of PC, and we've got the 19 car here as well. That's uh, Jordan Missing, and they are sitting here stuck right now. One car appears to not have power. The other one is uh, high-centered on the curbing to the outside of turn five. Yeah, uh, so much collateral damage there. Obviously, we saw the contact, Kiko Porto going off and trying to get back onto the racetrack when he did, right in the middle, of course, the remainder of the field streaming through turn number five. Right. He actually checked up on, I believe it was Jonathan Brown in the number two turn three motorsport car that got into the back of him. So Brown, as he comes by me here, I actually don't see really any damage. The crew going out to have a look at it there as well. I don't know that Brown has any damage. They'll work their way through. We do have drivers who have had some issues. As we said, Pizzi, Jordan Missig as well, Kiko Porto all involved. So three drivers, we think, uh, with an issue on track right now as we're watching them work their way to turn number one over to turn number two. We're going to give you another look at this, folks, uh, as they came down into turn number four. We all know opening time down into that straightaway is aggressive. Watch further back as they're side by side. Right there for a second, a little bit of contact between, I believe, Grand Force. Uh, Grand Force getting rolling up there. No, that was actually De Alba. Grand Force has to come back on as well. He falls down a couple. You see sliding right up front. And there's that contact with Jonathan Brown. Really nowhere to go, John. Yeah, and Kiko Porto didn't make it all the way around. In fact, he's up at turn nine. We're getting another replay from another view here. As you can see, Porto really had nowhere to go. Once he got off on the grass, he really couldn't control the car, and he got right up there in front of traffic. I don't think he pulled in front of them uh, intentionally. It was just uh, the momentum carried him there, and then two That's other it. cars got caught up behind. Yeah, and the end, like I said, was collateral damage, right? Sure. That just kept happening. Everybody was checking up. More drivers check up. Someone got into the back of Jordan missing. That looped him around a little bit as well. Uh, Pizzi was involved. Pizzi goes to the tail of the field. So right now it's Pizzi, missing and Porto. All out of this race right now, the AMR IndyCar safety crew heading down to the scene to get things underway there as well. Let's go to, out to Steve. You've got Porto in front of you. Yeah, Porto's just, uh, as he came through turn number eight, he wasn't very rolling very slowly. You could hear him stepping on the throttle, but the car wasn't going. And now as he stopped right here in front of me, that car is shut off. You wonder from the contact from behind Jonathan gearbox Brown, damage. some kind of a gearbox, yeah, some yeah. kind of a gearbox linkage issue, uh, issue with the gearbox. Just said the engine rolling, but it's not able to go anywhere. Tough one for Kiko Porto because, again, I'm telling you, this has been the weirdest day in terms of the championship chase. You know, Kiko Porto comes in, sitting second place in the points, started on the outside of the front row, and his mindset – I've just got to get out of here with D. Orlando. i got to see if I can't win, especially uh, with Miles Rowe uh, being down the order. He's eighth right now for Miles Rowe. This was an opportunity for Porto to close up. He ends up getting contact with Salvador de Alba coming down through turn number four. Both those drivers trying to get out of the outside of turn number four, that opening circuit. And he finds himself again, as we said, coming back across the racetrack. Joel Grandforce, one of the ones that had to kind of check up a little bit there. He went off a bit. We saw the contact with Jonathan Brown, Pizzi, Porto, missing the ones that are out now. I guess that what the big the big movers here are number one De Alba and number two Rishu Sajima started sixth. He finds himself up into third right now. So the Jay Howard driver development pilot, very happy there. How about as well, uh, Jace Denmark started eighth. He's up into fourth. The driver celebrating his 19th birthday at uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. 
Jack William Miller, P5. So it's De Orlando, De Alba, Ushijima, Denmark, and Miller, top five. Grand Force, six. Garg, seventh. Miles Rowe, eighth. Lucas St. Jean in the ninth spot and tenth is Yuvin Sooner and the up two spots. And Pizzi was able to get rolling again and did not lose a lap. He is uh, hustling right now. Here he comes through turn 11. He'll be able to catch up to the back of the field, but when he came by the first time, he's got some damage on that rear wing, which may uh, alter the handling on that car as he as he comes onto the front straightaway. We'll get a view of it, but the, uh, the uh, end plate on the rear wing is bent, so uh, that's going to change things just a little bit for Pizzi. He'll have to be careful. Steve, you got an update for us on Kiko Porto? Yeah, Porto ended up climbing out of the car and jumped into the AMR safety uh, vehicles, and he is away, but now they're uh, getting everything tied up. Unfortunately, they could not get that car refired, and uh, Porto is on his way probably for a trip to the infield care center. Wow. Uh, it's just huge, as I said, for the championship implications yeah, as yeah. he was second place in points uh, coming in. I believe, no, third place in points. Pizzi was second. So there's Pizzi. The driver's got going again. He is actually on, still on the on the lead lap, which yeah. is key for Pizzi. He was second place point coming in, uh, but just two points behind him was Kiko Porto. So there's a lot of lot of guys that uh, were in the fight here. And, again, we talked about this about Miles Rowe, right? He's got all those big wins at the start of the season. He's been consistent but not a dominant driver. He hasn't won since then. But – He's just being smart. Everybody else is kind of falling by the wayside right now. They just yeah. nobody's nobody has been able to put together a body of work that can challenge him and this massive point lead he has. And we're only halfway through the season, so there's a lot of racing left to go. Yeah, so. Toronto, uh, uh, Circuit of the Americas in Austin and Portland still to come for this category. So yeah, yeah, yeah. lots of racing for the drivers in the USF Pro Class. And again, Michael D. Orlando, though I, I expect decently happy, able to get out of the opening corners cleanly. He's fine. He's got De Alba right behind him, who is trying to get himself back up in the fight as well. Salvador De Alba, fifth place in points. His teammate Joel Grandforce in fourth. Grandforce running now sixth spot. And as I have said, anybody closing up on row, all you got to do is finish in front of him. Yep. At least you're gaining some points. Now, the massive gap that he has right now is a large one, but it, all you want to do is always try to finish in front of Rose. So right now, guys that are in that fight with him uh, because he's back in eighth with work to do for, for Miles Rowe. Yeah, he'll be starting on the uh, – Rowe will be starting on the pole for race number two based on second qualifying yesterday. So. And, John, he can have that in his head. Yeah, I, exactly right. I, I'm going to be up front in, in the race this afternoon. I don't need a massive result here, even a I've top got, ten. Good. I've got a 48-point lead. I can I can afford to, you know, come home and pit, pit back if I have to. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly right. that. Big. So again, this is kind of the maturation we've seen out of Miles Row, uh, kind of a raw, a raw rookie couple of years ago in USF 2000, a single car team with Force Indy. They elected to move him over to the Juggernaut, which is Pabst Racing. Uh, last season, he battled it out for a championship between Michael D. Orlando and his uh, and his Pabst Racing teammate uh, Jace Denmark. The three of them went at it, hammer and tong, uh, at the finale uh, at Portland. And in fact, both Denmark and Row contact with each other. They really essentially struggled to try to get the points they needed and uh, coming out of the fiery uh, inferno was De Orlando with the championship. He was third going in. He ends up with a, a long shot championship. But I think uh, Miles Rowe has shown what he has. The talent is there. The skill is there. The focus is there. And that uh, early season success has really put him in a fantastic spot here going into the second half of the season. And he's a great story as well because, you know, he didn't have the funding to go racing. And, uh, you know, he caught the attention of, of the folks at Penske and uh, Force Indy uh, were able to, to come on board and uh, fund him for a full season here. And so that's a great, uh, a great story that Miles Rowe has been able to, uh, uh, you know, chase his dream and, and show his talents uh, where he ordinarily might not have been able to just because of funding issues. Yeah, fantastic young man as well. So the, the full package for, for, for Miles Rowe, he is a great kid and, indeed, and we're thrilled to have him as part of our program. And I would be willing to say you're going to see him in the Indy Next program next year, uh, regardless if he wins the championship or not. He, yeah. He's lined up to move, I believe, to Indy Next, and he does, definitely has the speed to do it. So Miles Rowe currently running in that eight spot. Michael D. Orlando will look to uh, see if he can't take advantage of this early uh, incident to, to jet away again this race 30 laps long and that's one of the things we talked early uh, about the fitness side for this program and you know you go from usf 2000 up into usf pro and i'll tell you it's it's a it's a beast of a race car it's got uh, what 70 more horsepower more downforce more braking more everything uh it's just tougher on you and these drivers have got to be in the gym like crazy for them the next level of fitness and then to go 30 laps here is a long run at what is likely and they'll tell you the most physical racetrack on the circuit absolutely Absolutely right, and especially on a hot day. You know, the temperature is just uh, tickling uh, 80 degrees right now, 79 degrees being shown here. Uh, you know, it's going to be a, an issue. And we just to looked at the weather radar. And? And <laughs> the same thing that happened yeah, uh, last weekend. The big front of car, you know, it's raining and like, 
uh, hammer and tongs in Dayton. And by the time it gets to us, it's just gradually breaking up. You know, the clouds are going away. So it still looks pretty gray off to the west. That usually indicates there's some rain on the horizon, but we've seen it. It, it just, uh, you know, kind of a weird uh, meteorological thing but uh, look the last look at the radar the the front uh, that's coming through has broken up and it looks like we might skate by without any any rain this afternoon we'll see how it plays out i we... am not a meteorologist <laughs> nor do i play one on tv so i can just tell you that's my guess there's there's john's disclaimer right there exactly don't, don't right be, don't be sending him a, a tweet later yeah. on today yeah yeah uh, don't I put get... your rain tires back in the truck just yet <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So uh, one more time around, I believe, here as our, our drivers continue to circulate on the racetrack here. They'll put lap number four of the books now. We'll go lap five. So there'll be 25 laps still to go when we come back around here. So, indeed, D. Orlando, De Alba, Ushijima, Denmark, and Miller, the top five. Grand Force in sixth, Garg seventh, Rowe eighth, St. Jean ninth, and Sunder Murthy rounding out the top ten. We've got Turn 3 Motorsports leading, exclusive auto sports second, Jay Howard third, fourth Paps Racing, fifth military, uh, Miller Vinatieri Motorsports. Five different teams in the top five, and we talk a lot about the parity and the quality of the teams we have here in the USF Pro Championships presented by Cooper Tires. Thrilled to have them. And again, folks, if you want to meet these drivers, I mentioned it during USF 2000. We have our autograph session, the USF Pro 2000 drivers, their autograph session over in the fan zone in the midway. Same location as the IndyCar autograph session from yesterday. Uh, 2 o'clock for the USF Pro 2000 drivers, uh, 1.30 for USF 2000. All our drivers will be over there to get things underway being told that uh, turn nine now clear. So we're going to be able to go back to green, I believe, this next time by. The car's just coming out of Thunder Valley right now with Kiko Porto. So they'll try to work that. They'll probably bring that car all the way back here into the paddock as well. And we have a long way to go. I would think that, that we're going to be able to go back to green this time by. That, uh, that truck will get into the pit lane in time. Do want to mention as well, talk about Skip Barber a little bit. Those are the drivers that we've got coming into our program. Skip Barber and the racing school is the official racing school of the USF Pro Championships, and they're inviting drivers to compete for over half a million dollars in prizes, including a $100,000 scholarship for the series champion to enter USF Juniors. The eight-weekend, 16-race series will take place at the most iconic tracks in America with high visibility and a pro-race atmosphere. The Skip Barber Formula car features a 160-horsepower turbo engine, paddle shift six-speed transmission, and Goodyear Eagle racing slicks. You'll have a professional crew, expert instruction, video and data analysis, hospitality, and more. Sign up today at skipbarber.com. The pace car lights are out. Uh, the final AMR IndyCar safety crew going through turn number one. They're going to duck in there as well. I believe we're going to go potentially green flag racing this time. Bye. Indeed, pace car is in. Drivers will line things up. Michael D. Orlando will be the leader as they roll out, and he is already on the loud pedal. We are back to green flag racing as De Alba. See if he can't chase after Michael D. Orlando rolling through turn number one. Jace Denmark looking racy right on the back of Ushijima, Rusty. All single foul right now, a little calmer than they were the first time around here as we get the restart up into the keyhole turn, but a challenge back there and a block, a uh, little defensive driving going on for that third spot with uh, Jace Denmark and uh, Yushijima as they make their way onto the straightaway. We'll catch that. Uh, they may have just been setting themselves up here for a pass at the top end, and here they come. The 20 car on the inside, Denmark trying to get around Yushijima, side by side, going to make it three wide. It is three wide as they come down. Two cars come around. That blue and black car, the number six car there of Ushijima, he loses two spots. Leader continues to be Michael D. Orlando. D. Orlando down into through turn number eight, down into turn number nine, about a car length up on uh, the Alba with that battle for third, fourth, fifth, and sixth is tight. Nose to tail all the way back through the field as they head through Thunder Valley and back up towards uh, the carousel. Yeah, I think Ushijima thought better of there and said, I'm on the outside of this. It's getting ugly. He kind of checked up and pulled out of it. Yeah, he lost a couple of spots, but he's going to get an opportunity to keep going. There's one driver's coming into pit lane. We have a driver in pit lane. I think that might. Is that Day Alba? I think so. Indeed, Salvador Day Alba has come into pit lane. I'll see what happens as he comes by. Looking to see if there's any damage on the car. I don't see it. I wonder whether or not they're going to call potentially, is it a drive-through penalty? 
because he's rolling his way up pit lane right now. That's exactly it's going to be a drive-through penalty for Salvador de Alba. So whatever happened in the opening lap, uh, they are going to give him the penalty for the likely the contact then with Porto. With, with Porto. So incident yeah. responsibility for de Alba. He rolls into pit lane, and he will be crossing his fingers for another yellow flag to get back at it here because he is in championship contention as well. Dear Orlando, your leader, Denmark, that puts him up to second. So how about Denmark goes by two drivers, goes to th third, it ends up being second, the birthday boy, up into P2 right now. So Denmark there, uh, Jack William Miller, he's into third. But guys, he's the one that's leading them up. Steve, they're going to come into you. Watch that battle right now for third on back. And looking for that as they crest the hill in turn number eight. It is uh, Miller with Uzajima right on the rear deck as he jumps the curb there in turn number nine, but keeps it under him. And they will head up to turn number 11. Stay single file. Nothing doing for Uzajima. Yeah, a lot of action here as drivers finally settling in. We talk about the first couple of laps after a restart being hectic. These drivers settling in nicely. Single file. Now you can kind of go to work on the driver in front of you. But Michael D. Orlando, John, he needs this race win so badly to get himself back into the fight. Look where he is he comes in here 11th spot in points he's 94 points back he needs to get you know 10 15 points a race if he wants to get himself back in the fight to win the scholarship and battle it out with miles Rowe, who currently runs seventh the number two of jonathan brown back into pit lane that wing damage finally coming loose so he'll bring that car and that moves more drivers up as well it's going to give salvador de alba a spot but again the championship battle we talk about this d orlando needs these races bad he's going to start on the outside of row for the race this afternoon so two drivers who battle it out for us SF2000 Supremacy last year are going to fight it out in the front row. But right now, D. Orlando doing everything he needs to do to get out front. Yep, we still got that battle down for third place. Jack William Miller is able to hold on to it as they came off the four into five right on his rear deck. So, Reese Yushijima ran fours right behind them. The Orlando continues to open it up here, but that battle for third continues to be good as Usajima takes a quick pick to the inside of turn nine. Nothing doing there. He'll fall back single file and lead that pack back up towards turn number 11. Yeah, Joel Granforce is the interested spectator right now. Is he not kind of sitting yep. there P5 watching uh, Usajima get aggressive here, trying to see if he can't slide through uh, Granforce again. Fourth place in points coming in. So he is in front of Miles Rowe, which is all that is needed right now. Rowe uh, running with the Juven Sooner Murley and the, the number 90 closing in on him. Well, look at the gap in, in pace. Yeah, Roa is actually a couple of tenths of a second quicker that last time by. It's getting a little darker here trackside. Uh, the gap between Roa and Sooner Murthy, seventh and eighth, is about four tenths of a second. The gap, though, Rusty Bell, 1.4 seconds. D. Orlando was matched, though, on time by Denmark. Both those drivers laying down 120.7s. Yeah, not seeing any change at that gap at the front. They're both consistent. They're pulling away, though, from that 40 machine of uh, Miller. And right behind Miller, though, uh, Yushijima not losing track at all. In fact, he's right in the wheel tracks going through turn four. Absolutely, as they come up over five once again, less than a car length separating Miller and Yushijima. And I like this is back then to Grand Four sitting there in fifth. And that battle right there with Ushijima as he looks back in the rear view mirror and he'll see that fifth place car of Joel Grandforce. He can look in the mirror and see him close enough to know the wheels are turning, try to find a spot to make a pass. That's a good four-way battle for the final step on the podium. Jack William Miller's only podium so far has been at, on the oval at IRP where he uh, took a third spot from the pole. So this would uh, match his best finish of the season and his first road course podium he's, if he's able to stay there. I think one of the key things to mention here as well is, is the long distance of this race, right? We're not even really to the third uh, way mark. We're, we're nine laps in. Uh, it's a 30-lap race. So we're, again, not even to the one-third mark here. And the drivers, well, how are, the, are they handling these cars? Uh, what are we going to do in terms of tire deg at the end of a longer run like this? Who's taking care of their tires a little bit? We know that Michael D. Orlando came in a little early in qualifying yep. and uh, maybe saved a couple of laps. Is that going to help him uh, as much? Is, is Denmark potentially going to close up? The gap now 1.5 seconds between first and second. D. Orlando doing a good job to stretch out. But this scrap, I'll tell you, Risu Shijima, he wants to get back on the podium. He's got one podium finish on the year as well. Uh, he really wants to get on it. We are getting a call. Steve, out to you. Are you getting some rain out there? I am. The raindrops have started to fall. We can, in fact, see some of the fans starting to uh, maybe scurry for a uh, some an umbrellas or uh, even uh, tarps covering up their camping areas as the leaders come by through us. The track will stay dry as long as we're running. It's not enough to lose the racetrack or do any damage, but it is here. 
Yeah, at 80 degrees as well, that the uh, all the, the rain that does uh, obviously fall is going to evaporate pretty quickly, especially with these drivers getting at it. But again, they get back around again. We're going to definitely, they'll see it on the visors. They're no, uh, they'll know it's coming. And thankfully, this is the top level of our program. We've got drivers who have been in our series, you know, for four to five years. So they've got a lot of experience. If the uh, the grip level start going down, they're going to be able to handle it because there's no need to go to rains until we have, a you know, a deluge. So oh, yeah, yeah, up yeah. front, these guys have to get the job done. And again, Denmark... Uh, pushing hard. Last time by, though, he lost three-tenths of a second. I'll tell you, Rusty, I think Michael Orlando's car is starting to come in. The midway point still coming. Ten laps down, 20 to go, and Orlando now leading by 1.8 seconds. He's looking good out front. That time, Miller, though, with a big lockup, the 40 car, and he really didn't have much pressure, but he locked up going into the keyhole as he's trying to maintain the pace of those two cars in front. Well, he's got a little bit more of an advantage now over Yakajima as they come into five, now six, three car lengths separating third and fourth. And we look back for that battle for third, fourth, and fifth. A, a couple car lengths between uh, Jack Miller and uh, Ushijima. Closest battle back on the uh, track looks to be back for about that seventh position with Miles Rowe. Yeah, one of the other great fights as well, guys, is a little further back with Yuvin Sundermurthy, Lucas St. Jean, and Z uh, Liram Zendeli. The final spot's inside the top 10. I believe St. Jean able to get by, so he moves his way up into the eighth spot. He'll be the driver now trying to chase down Rowe at about four tenths of a second on Sundermurthy last time by. We'll have a look at the gaps as they come by, start, finish here with us. Dear Lando, Denmark, Miller, Ushijima, and Grand Force top five. Garg, six tenths of a second back in seventh. You go back a second over a second to Rowe, although St. John on the move right now. John, he was four tenths of a second quicker than Rowe last time by, and he is on the gearbox already. Rusty Bell, you're going to see a battle here, I think, for uh, P7 as Lucas St. John in the turn three, number three machine, putting on the pressure. I see Yushijima getting close, and then that battle you're talking about here, it's a car length by me. Defensive driving being done right in front by guards as uh, they make their way down to the turn four. Yeah, Miles Rose still in that seventh place position right behind him. St. Jean up over five. The right hander at six. Less than uh, less than a card like separating the battle now for seventh. And that battle for seventh is about to go side by side, taking a look to the inside of St. John. Nothing there as he'll fall back in line. But behind Miles Row, they'll stay single file up through Thunder Valley and about another car lane, a couple car lengths back to the eighth place running of or ninth place running of Sunday Morrow. Yeah, Lucas St. John, Steve, is a young Canadian. He's making his second start here in, in the USF Pro 2000. Began the season in USF 2000. Uh, had a rough run at Sebring. Didn't run the runs uh, events in May uh, in Indianapolis. Came back at Road America with turn three motorsports and that team owner Peter Dempsey was very high on him after a pretty solid test he looked very good at Road America and he's running top 10 right now and actually going at it with the driver who is in the championship driver's seat right now so Lucas St. Jean and that number three putting the pressure on row we'll see whether or not he's able to make the move right now the gap behind them is where the scrap is uh, Zendeli I believe to the inside he and Sooner Murthy are going at it and that's going to bring Christian Weir Jackson Lee and maybe even Ricardo Escoto into the discussion Ten cars side by side uh, trying to get there. Zendeli is uh, right there trying to make that move. Looked like he made it stick, Tom. Looks like it did. So we have uh, a real good battle as you take a look back there from 10th on back. Meanwhile, the guys in front of him continue to pull away. D. Orlando and Jace Denmark, they're 1-2. Yeah, you and Sundar Murthy in a sandwich right now with a couple of TJ Speed drivers. That is Liram Zendeli and Christian Weir. And that is essentially 9th, 10th, and 11th. We're seeing a lot of great running. St. Jean falling back a little bit, having put the pressure on there early. We'll see if he's able to dial it back in as they come out into the carousel. Everyone low lining into the corner to try to see if they can't uh, hold those challengers at bay. We'll continue to watch this fight with uh, Miles Rowe, who runs in that 7th spot. He's got himself a little bit more of a gap now. It's, again, almost a half a second is both he and St. Jean learning 119 eights. And that's one of the key things. Again, this racetrack is tough. You can close up on a driver, but once you get right on to them, you have to make sure you're having a different line to get some air over the wing because, John, uh, th these long distance, you know, uh, the corners like the carousel, like the keyhole. Man, you're right up in there. You get the arrow wash, and you just have to deal with that understeer. And these cars have more of it than the, than the USF 2000 exactly cars because yeah. they generate more downforce. That makes more arrow wash tougher for the following car. 
So you got to make that move when you come down into turn number four. You really have to be able to set it up. You might even pull back a little bit uh, coming through the keyhole. You don't need to be right on the gearbox. Give yourself a bit of room, and there is, wow, entry un, uh, oversteer right there for, I believe, Trouble, Barnes. turn number nine. One car off into the gravel. That is the sixth car of uh, Reese Usajama. He just hit that bump in turn number eight, lost the back end of the car, and looped it around, and he is stuck spinning the rear wheels in the gravel. So trouble over there, as we said, into turn number nine for Reese Ushijima. Steve giving us the update there, so that could bring us out. If it is indeed in there, that could bring us out the full course yellow. We're not even to the halfway point. This was going to be a gift to Salvador de Alba. He would love to see the full course yellow come out. Not sure that we're going there yet. Steve, you got an update? Is the driver still in the gravel? Yeah, Ushijima, he is stuck. He is about halfway back in the gravel. He's facing the racetrack, uh, but those rear wheels, as he stepped on the gas, did nothing but kick up gra gravel, and he is not moving. No. A 1.9 second lead for D Orlando goes bye bye. It is done. Denmark going to have another shot at him here. So we are restacking everything at the halfway point. They'll put lap 15 uh, in the books when they come back around. So it'll be 15 down, 15 to go. Full course yellow. Ushijima off over in the 8 9 complex. That moves Grand Force up into fourth. Guard to fifth. Rowe goes to sixth. St. Jean seventh. Zendeli, Sooner, Murthy, and Weir, your top 10. But it's a gift for Salvador de Alba who will get back right up in the line to see if he can't get himself a couple more spots. It's deja vu all over again for our <laughs> leader who had built up a big two, two plus second lead. And uh, Simon Sykes will we'll be happy to tell you that he had a six second lead yeah. that disappeared with a full course yellow. And it got, when it, when it got much worse as he had contact with uh, Lockie Hughes there up into the key hole, Sykes ended up finishing all the way down the order. So D Orlando is uh, keeping his fingers crossed that he can get a clean restart and pull away from Jace Denmark. Uh, once we get the restart here. But like you say, we've got half this race still to go. Yeah, and I think the interesting thing is you got a couple guys behind the Orlando, Denmark and Miller, who are hungry for a race oh, yeah. win here as well. Both those drivers trying to turn their seasons around uh, with big wins. Denmark, as we said, celebrating his uh, 19th birthday here today. So those drivers are going to be aggressive on the opening uh, lap when we get back to green, as I had said. But this is huge for... Uh, uh, Salvador de Alba, even if all he's able to do is get a handful of spots here, because uh, he knows he's got a car that can run up front. He's going to start third, I believe, in the race this afternoon. So uh, the pace is there for Salvador de Alba in the exclusive Autosport Arch Andal machine. The young Mexican who uh, many times throughout the season has been with us here at a race, then flown all the way back home uh, to, to Mexico to run in the Mas NASCAR Mexico Series. So he's doing a lot of racing. I think he's working on flight number 38 or 39 already for the season. Guys, who's got an update up there for me? Yeah, Ushijima has got the car refired, and he's gone, probably pulling back into the pit road. Uh, looked like a little bit of damage on the left side of that car as he uh, pulled away from me, but uh, they'll get that checked out there in pit road. But we are clear. A little bit of debris from uh, dirt and grass on the outside, but uh, hopefully that shouldn't be any issue. Nobody should be racing out there. Yes. I've, I've got rain, though, here on the back straightaway. Rain uh, coming down right now. It's still fairly light, but it is definitely coming down pretty good right now. Why not? Let's just throw something yeah. else at this, right? Let's do it. <laughs> uh, guys, well, just, just, just an update. Uh, Ushijima did stay out on the racetrack, I think, trying to catch back up a little bit before maybe coming into pit lane uh, to have a look at the car. He wanted to make sure he didn't get uh, go down a lap, so... So we're being told we got rain on the back straightaway. We've Windshield got, wipers on the safety car. Oh, there you go. Well, we don't have those on our, our, our open wheel formula cars, sadly. So, uh, of course, you know, race control will be monitoring this uh, this uh, situation very closely right now. D Orlando, Denmark, Miller, Grand Force, and Garg, the top five. 15 laps in. We'll go into the second half of the race here. And, and John, let's just throw this out there for those of you maybe watching at home who are new to the USF Pro Championships, new to competition here at Mid-Ohio. Uh, if, if running in the dry is tough here, running in the wet here, and I've done it myself, it is extremely difficult. This is a Absolutely. challenging track in the wet. The, the word I, and I, I've i used and the drivers have told me is diabolical. This, <laughs> racetrack, a word. this and, racetrack is a handful in the wet. And I've already got somebody that's it's bit right now, and that's Yushijima, who's high-centered right now. He came through the keyhole turn, probably got in that uh, damp track, and he is high-centered. So we're going to have to get the safety vehicle out to get him uh, off the track right now. And remember, those tires are probably pretty dirty as well because yep, he didn't exactly. come into pit lane, didn't get a chance to really get them cleaned up. And indeed, the rain has arrived. We'd hoped it wasn't, but yeah, we see people on pit lane. The umbrellas are coming out. Drivers, of course, on the racetrack right now. And uh, the track's starting to get a little darker, if you will. So we'll drivers, of course, all get a feel for it, trying to keep those tires heated up. 16 laps in. 
At this point, uh, not sure what the call is from race control, whether or not uh, there is an, oppor uh, an opportunity to make that move. Francesco Pisi, the first to dive into the pit lane. Are they doing a, uh, a precautionary tire change here, trying to get the jump on the field as... That is the case. They are putting wet weather tires on Pizzi's car. And why not, right? You're back in 15th position. He's second place in points. Roll the dice on it. Try to get yourself back into the fight. Yep, absolutely. So being told red flag coming in, so uh, potentially. So we're going to see whether we've got a red flag here at start finish. Yes, I see it being thrown here now. Red flag at start finish. There's Ushijima. We talked about him being off coming out of the keyhole. He is high center on that side of the racetrack. Very likely got onto the uh, the rumbles, the painted rumbles, and looped it around. The rain is now very apparent here trackside. So everyone's going to come in. We're going to be going to wets, and that will be the call. Right now, the first driver, and as we said, was Pizzi, but red flag. We'll see how that plays out. I think I think the crew, from what I can see here, the uh, tech crew on pit lane has told the Pizzi team to stop working on the tires. So I'm sure they'll have to dial things in. Yeah. So again, folks, we are going to wets. Interesting for sure. One of the things that race control is doing is, this, you know, this is a precautionary step on the part of race control. The worst situation can be for a, a whole field of cars to be out there on dry weather tires. The rain comes in mid-race and they have to, you know, deal with that. So rather than uh, uh, put all of these cars and drivers at risk, you know, race control makes the decision. We're going to bring them in, let everybody change to wets and then go back out and finish. So this race. Patrick Steffen from track side online coming in to give me a hand. He's obviously listening to race control. They're going to bring all the drivers, get them all into their pit, uh, their pit stalls. And then at that point, a five minute time, time limit to get your tires changed. And we'll yep. get back out onto the racetrack. And I would assume with the, with Pizzi coming in early, they'll allow kind of give him his lap back. Sure. Because he did come in. He could have put the tires on. They stopped it. So we'll see how that all plays out. So, indeed, we have rain. We thought it could potentially come. It has arrived. And we will see some wet weather action here. With uh, At that point, when they come around, we'll put lap 17 in the book. So we'll have uh, potentially 13 laps of wet weather racing. One thing, if you're trackside here, folks, and this is kind of a cool deal we've got going on with Cooper Tires. If you come over to the Cooper Tire compound, which is in the upper paddock, just come into the paddock, walk straight to the very, very top of the paddock. That's where Cooper Tires are taking care of the tires for all of our, uh, our drivers here in the USF Pro Championship drivers and teams they are selling tires so you, you can as a great souvenir you can buy a tire one of our used race tires ten dollars yep. that ten dollars goes to indycar ministry all the money goes to charity so if you're looking for a cool souvenir to take home from the weekend head on up to the very top of the paddock uh ten dollars for a for a souvenir cooper tire race tire now i'm gonna i'm gonna play devil's advocate here and rusty bell you can uh you can join in the into this look to the west we've got Bright, bright skies. This is a very brief shower, it appears, and there looks to be clear, clear skies coming in from the west. Would you gamble and stay on slicks, Rusty Bell? Yes. Well, here, here's the thing, guys. I don't know. But that, I don't think they have a choice. I don't yeah. think they have a choice. <laughs> exactly that. Now, this is this happened with us at Indianapolis already back in May on the road course. The rain came hard. We everybody came and they, they brought them in. You've got to put on your rain tires. Everybody comes to put rain tires on, and then it went dry. Yeah. So. You know, you can't really do enough to the cars to make them handle better. The setup, some drivers may have had setups that work better because we saw the two Jay Howard drivers, Ricardo Escoto and Risu Shijima, ended up coming away first and second. Yeah. They were nowhere in the dry, but in the wet, uh, the wet slash getting dry, they were able to come to the forefront. So uh, everybody getting into their pit stalls here right now. Drivers were a little confused in terms of coming up to the front of the grid. We're getting these guys pushed back into their stalls. That way we'll be able to get them. So once everybody's actually in their stalls, then we'll release them. Now, this is the issue. If it's a short rain, this is going to be kind of sketchy. I don't know how we, how we play this at this point here. We could have just waited it out or, man, interesting for sure. Michael D'Orlando, regardless will be your leader when they roll back out on track. Exactly right. So it's all about, uh, you know, the, the tire choice. And if race control mandates, you know, basically declares it a wet race, everybody has to go on wets. But if they give the teams any latitude, I'm with Rusty. I would gamble uh, on staying on the dry tires because we still got half this race to run. And I don't think, you know, we're going to have a downpour here in the next few minutes. So that's just a, that's just a guess. But uh, that certainly would add a, an interesting flavor to this one.
Hey, listen, you, you got to listen to the guys that are here week in and week out, John. You've spent time here. You guys know the weather. You guys know what this track is like. I've been here in the wet before, of course. But uh, indeed, if this is just a small cell, this is going to be these guys are going to roll out here on these tires and we're going to see them going essentially back to slicks once they rub all the tread off these things. So yeah. these are soft compound tires. Yeah, that's the problem with wet weather tires. Uh, in addition to the grooves, which uh, allow the tire to pump the water away, uh, it's a very, very soft rubber compound. And if you run a wet weather tire on a dry track, it goes away in a hurry. Uh, you literally, uh, it'll start to chunk. You have all kinds of issues. And so, uh, you know, it becomes a, an issue of you can't run a wet weather tire on a dry track, but if you're mandated to go out on wets, you'll have to make the best of it. Some guys may may gamble and, you know, come in, change back to slicks. Uh, you know, I've, I've been, uh, you know, uh, called races here where that's been exactly the case, where everybody goes out on wets and then somebody makes the gamble, comes in early on slicks, uh, loses a lot of time in the pit lane, but then, you know, is a rocket ship uh, compared to everybody else and works his way back toward the front. So it happens. This will be interesting. Like I said, it, it's, it depends on the setup you have in the car. Like it, if you know you're going out in, in, in the rain, the wet setup's going to be a lot of different. Of course. You yeah, have yeah. to have the car set up much differently. So if your car maybe was leaning towards what would have been a closer to a wet setup, you yep. may find yourself uh, with good pace here. So that's why things are going to be very interesting. I did get a call from Race Control, Jim Swintel, telling me, indeed, they're changing tires, as we said. We'll get them uh, relined up and, under, and, and set back up at the front of the grid. So, again, we'll take our time to get them all done here. Rains are going on. The rain lights getting on as well. So, uh, again, I think for everybody here, they'd love to see the rain continue to come as opposed to to kind of fade away because that that's going to make things very interesting here. Uh, if indeed uh, the rain does start to stop, so if this this is challenging for the multi car teams too because uh, they don't necessarily have a full uh, complement of pit crew for each car. They share those duties. So the the, uh, the teams with multiple cars here, exclusives got f four cars. Jay Howard's got multiple cars. You know they have to you know to uh, do the pit stops one at a time. And so that puts a little extra pressure because I'm looking down here at Ushijima's car. He is still on slicks and nobody's working on that car. Yeah, they'll get there sooner or later. Obviously, the crew doing their best to get the first the first uh, the car of a Skoto done first, and they'll move their way over to Reese Ushijima as well. So again, uh, on a delay, red flag is done. We have 17 laps in the books, 13 laps still to go here in the Cooper Tires Grand Prix of Mid-Ohio, the front end of the double header for the drivers here in USF Pro 2000 presented by Cooper Tires. Michael D'Orlando had a lead of 1.2 seconds, but it is gone. Uh, D'Orlando, Denmark in second. Jack William Miller will line up third. Joel Grandforce in fourth. Bajoy Guard fifth. Miles Rowe in sixth spot, Lucas St. Jean in seventh, Liram Zandelli in eighth, Yuvin Sunder Murthy and Christian Weir round out the top ten. Jackson Lee runs eleventh, Ricardo Escoto in twelfth, Lindsey Brewer thirteenth, Nicholas Montiero fourteenth, and Salvador de Alba uh, getting that uh, the benefit. He is now fifteenth. Pizzi is lining up here sixteenth now as he has not put the seventeenth lap in the book because he came into the pits early. We'll see how that plays out. Uh, Jonathan Brown is in the seventeenth spot. Uh, Risu Shijima, as we know. Uh, trying to get him back on it. And Kiko Porto, Jordan missing the two drivers uh, out. Uh, no laps issues on the opening lap for both those drivers. Uh, they'll have another race to go this afternoon. And uh, unfortunately, this is not Formula One. You can't have 19 guys working on the car and uh, change four tires in two seconds. This is uh, this is a little more uh, a little more. Uh, uh, the way you would change tires in your own garage, basically, exactly. pretty That's... much one at a time. So it, it does take a little extra time. And we can see uh, work being done on the car right here below us. They're uh, loosening up that front suspension. That's it. You know, soften up the roll bars, give the car a little more lean. That is uh, what a wet weather setup is all about. And some of the teams are taking the extra time to do that as well. So I'm very interested here right now. Uh, John, Rusty, you're out there. Is there rain still on the back straightaway? There is not. Oh no! It, it stopped. I would, I, like we said, I wouldn't be on reins right now. If, wow. uh, I certainly, uh, if you go on reins, I would leave the dry setup uh, on the car for the moment because it's going to be dry here shortly. Indeed. So we'll see how this plays out here, folks. Uh, Going to move to the wet weather tires and what potentially could be a drying racetrack at this point. Engines. Okay, there's Steve giving us an update. You still have rain in turn number nine. That's a sketchy part of this racetrack as they're rotating that car through turn number nine. So, it, listen, at the very least, John, as you know, if, even if half the track is going to be wet, at least you get a chance to cool those tires off a little bit. It's when they're running on a full dry track that the soft compound of a rain tire with the tread really just chews up nicely. So, again, 
uh, wet in the back, dry in the front. This is going to be very interesting. Engines have fired back on pit lane. We said number of drivers making some changes to their race cars. Looks to me up and down the grid. Uh, most drivers, although I don't know, is Ushi Ushijima, is he still in the car? He's, he's in the car and on slicks. And they just made a tire pressure adjustment. He's two laps down, so I think a chance of of him, you know, getting into the way into the points is slim. But he'll be the canary in the coal mine because if he does come out in uh, on the dry weather tires and he is like, you know, lightning quick, that's going to be uh, that's going to be something for the teams to think about. Yeah, this is a, what I'm, I'd like to get an update here: whether or not you had to go to Reigns or if you could stay with Slicks if that's what you wanted to do. I don't know what the call is at this point here. If, if I think I would think you had to go to, to, to Reigns. I'll see if I can't get an update on that. Sure. Uh, but otherwise, uh, drivers starting to line things up right now. Yeah, they're getting lined up behind the safety car down at pit lane as uh, everybody's got their rain lights on, the flashing red light at the back of the car. You think, well, why is that the case? Well, uh, it, you'll see if uh, we have you know significant wet weather, these uh, rain tires kick up a huge amount of spray. And so visibility for these drivers gets down to zero uh, with, the, with all the spray kicking up by uh, the other cars out on the track. So that flashing rain light is literally there. So the car has something to, or the driver has something to see rather Rather than plow into the back of somebody because the spray, uh, you know, hit his visibility. And Steve tells me the rain has stopped at turn nine now. And I just got the update, guys, uh, from our for race director Joel Miller that yes, you have to change to rain tires. So uh, you, you must go to the rains, and that's what uh, we're getting down from the officials. I got more information coming in, but they're doing their best to get the drivers lined up there again. As I said, De Orlando, Denmark, Miller, Grantforth, and Garg, top five, Rowe, Saint Jean. Zandelli, Suter, Murthy, and Weir, 6 through 10. 11 through 15 is Jackson Lee, Ricardo Scotto, Lindsey Brewer. Uh, then it's uh, Nicholas Montiero and Salvador de Alba. And then we'll see uh, Pizzi as well. Jonathan Brown we expect to see. Risu Sajima, Porto, and Missing, of course, we're done. So essentially what happens is once you've changed, you know, I'm saying if you want to change back to slicks, you can do it after taking the green. So you have to go out right now on rain tires. If you want to come right back in and put on slicks, you can do that. But a five-minute five, five minute change is going to be what? Here, you know, three. Two, two or three laps. Two or least. three laps, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, Ushin Jima's car is still sitting there. They're, they're sending the cars down to uh, queue up behind the safety car in grid order. Uh, Salvatore de Alba has been done for a long time. He's, he's the last car on the lead lap. And uh, so the, the, he was having to wait. Let's uh, go out to Steve with an update. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm sitting here watching the track. When it was raining just like three minutes ago, it was significantly dark. You could see where it was wet. But as this wind is blowing, uh, the track, I think, is actually drying pretty quickly from any moisture that was on it. Well, that's going to change things, folks. This will be very interesting. The rains, uh, the, the treaded Cooper rain tires, obviously fantastic in damp weather. They don't work that good in, uh, uh, when we're back to dry, dry racing. Soft compound, much less com uh, contact patch. It'll chew those treads off it pretty quickly. Yep. Uh, so this could be, be very interesting in how this kind of plays out. Michael De Orlando, again, I, I'll, I feel bad for Michael, uh, mainly because the bad luck that he's had all year long, yeah. literally had this race essentially in hand, was cruising around over a second and a half lead, uh, and then finds him now. now. Now he's not even in a position where it's full wet that he can be fine and, and, and be good in the wet and pull away. No, yep. it's going to be potentially a situation where if, if these tires do degrade very quickly, uh, really everything's up for grabs at that point. But the drivers are pulling back onto the racetrack to get things underway. Uh, again, 17 laps are, are done. When they come back around, we'll see lap number 18 roll. 12 laps remaining. And again, guys, this is going to be interesting all around this racetrack. Usajima's crew is in conversation with the uh, officials down here on pit lane. Uh, they have not made a move to change the tires on Reese's car. And they're in, uh, in uh, discussion uh, with the officials to try to get a ruling. You know, he's already two laps down. Are they are they asking, can he just wait, let the field go by and get another lap down and then just go Indeed. out on slicks? Yeah. Yeah, that may be that may be what they're negotiating right now. He's the only car on pit lane. It would put him three laps down. Does, yeah. He, does yeah, he, yeah. he think he'd be fast enough for three laps down to catch back up with twelve to go? Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Somehow I don't think so. I don't think so either. Yeah. But again, this is the uh, the uh odd nature of what we have going on here right now it's one of those deals where the track was wet but maybe you know but not too wet to, for for slicks because we saw a driver spin right 
But again, just it's tough. This place is again, it's it's diabolical, as you said. I love that word to describe what it's like to drive here in the wet. It is not easy at all. But we are going to see what these drivers are able to do. We will go green this first time by, no doubt about that. D Orlando, Denmark, Miller, Grand Force, and Garg. Top five. Again, the point leader row in six spot. We'll see how this all plays out. Second and third in points. Uh, Pizzi and Porto already out. Rusty's already got one off. Go ahead. Yeah, I've got one off uh, coming on to the straightaway out of the keyhole turn. He's facing away from me. Uh, could be high centered. Uh, I think that could be Lindsey Brewer potentially look, around. Yep, looks like it. Yeah, but uh, safety team on its way, so we probably won't get the green this time by as it'll take a moment for that safety vehicle to get up there and uh, pull that car off of the curbing uh, so they're not high centered. Indeed, they'll work their way around here. That was, I believe, uh, Lindsay Brewer has gone around. She was 13th. And again, think about that. The drivers are trying to kind of warm these tires up. Although it is still pretty warm out right now, 80 degrees, and there is some wet on the, on the track, these tires still need to get some heat built into them here to get that oh, maximum yeah. grip, right? And, and again, if it's not the toughest corner on this racetrack in the wet, the keyhole is so tough. It's Downhill, close, off yep. camber, like everything you don't want in the wet, right? <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> exactly right. So they'll work their way back around. We will not go green this time by. Ideally, they'll be able to get the car of Lindsey Brewer rolling. She may go down a lap as they work their way out of turn number 13 and 14 right now. Right now, again, as I said, folks, 18 laps into what will be 30. We have a longer run here for this particular race as well. This is a 50-minute race, so there is still a, a little bit of time here rolling down. We, yeah, we actually, if you look at session time, yeah, we we're within five minutes. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I got to look at that as well. So all the, the the running around, the yellows that we've already had here now, we're literally down to potentially just four. When we go back to green, what? One lap? D Orlando's crew sprinted down to Lindsey Brewer's crew and said, hey, why don't you spin off the keyhole and let's eat up a little more of this time. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so we are, I'm, I, just, I, I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> of course, they would never do that, but it's still, uh, we're going to get a, a replay here of uh, of Lindsey's spin. And yep, yep, just get on the throttle. It she had stickers on to boot. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. about as easy. Folks, we've all done it before. When oh, you got yeah. tires like that, and then she obviously tried to get rolling again and then got herself high-centered. Yep. 56, uh, 46 minutes rather on the clock. So, four minutes. Going to get a confirmation from race control that if we're on the clock now, I believe we are. That would mean uh, about four minutes remaining. As we are 46 13 into the session time here now. All that work being done, of course, to get the tire, you know, the five minute hold. Uh, to get those tires changed was, was part of this. So we'll see how it plays out. Michael D. Orlando, again, the leader. Will this still play into his hand? Will he get an opportunity to potentially still get this? Indeed, we are on the clock. There is four, three and a half minutes remaining. We So if we go green this time by, which we probably will, we are looking essentially at one lap. Yeah, It'll one or a, maybe two. Yeah. Maybe two. Yeah. I, knowing how slow they are just coming through five, six, and seven right now, I would think that by the time they get back around, we're going to be looking very likely at 48. So lights out in the pace car, folks. Being told that we are set to go. You can see a shot there coming through turn number uh, eight over to turn number nine. Steve was telling us that it is still a bit damp over there. We watch, obviously, Lindsay coming and looping around, coming through there. So we know that the keyhole still has some dampness. So that means that this opening lap is still going to be quite sketchy. Denmark wants the win. Miller wants the win. Uh, D. Orlando needs the victory to get himself back into championship contention. They'll work their way to the top of the hill. Well, if we wanted an exciting finish, we got it. Essentially, I think it's going to be probably a maybe a one-lap dash as we're 47 30 two and a half minutes to go we are green flag once again and away we go rain tires on and they'll rock their way into turn number one who gets through cleanly miller pushing from behind dear lando tries to hold you run the rain line or is the race line dry enough they'll work their way back out as jonathan brown has come into pit lane over now to turn number two into the keyhole a big wide line for dear lando he's going to hold the spot he'll work his way down the battle i think right now for second denmark right there miller getting aggressive as they work their way out of the keyhole back to rusty bell down the straightaway, everybody bunching up, going into the keyhole turn, but everybody able to make it through turn one in the keyhole, but here comes the 40, Miller, now on the outside, he's going to try to make it stick, he's got some momentum. 
He's not going to be able to make it stick as he uh, had to back off, coming down into four. So we continue with the Orlando, Denmark, Miller. Everybody getting through the turn five area okay. Leader up into turn eight. Look to me like I think uh, our point leader, Rowe, having some trouble. Some drivers making moves. Zendeli and Sejan able to get by. Will we see the white flag or is this the last lap? First time down into what we know is a more damp section of the racetrack through turn number nine and into Thunder Valley. I don't know if we're going checker. I don't know white. if we're going white. There yep. we go. So we are going to go white. One more lap around, a two-lap dash to the end. So we'll get 21 in. Or, yes, 21 in the books. Here they come back around. Big lead for Michael D'Orlando. This guy needs this victory. D'Orlando, Denmark, Miller, and then Grand Force. Again, we'll watch to see what kind of aggression we can get out of Salvador de Alba. He's going to make a move to the inside of Montiero further back. Watch this battle through turn number one. Down to the bottom comes Salvador de Alba. He sends it to the inside. He'll get at least three uh, spots here on the opening circuit. Back down, of course, into the keyhole again. The fight again for P2. Jack William Miller trying to get by. Chase Denmark. Great battling further back as well. Rusty, a solid lead, though. 1.3 for Michael D. Orlando. Chase Denmark got it crossed up at turn one, so he lost his momentum, and he's lost that spot right now. And on the inside, it's Miller down to the inside at four. But once again, here comes Denmark. Denmark to the outside. Able to make the pass coming through there, the number 20. Back up there in the second place, Miller in third, but our leader continues to be the Orlando. Yeah, Miller just covered off the bottom as well, too, trying to hold off what is now a charging Joel Grandforce. That looks like the Orlando's going to be able to run this thing to the end, but this final battle for second, third, and fourth, the last two spots of the podium is pretty hectic. Denmark able to get back by Miller. Grandforce trying to get himself onto the podium as well. The Orlando will crest the hill and back into the carousel. Looking good right now for the young driver to Hartsdale, New York. A big victory potentially coming for him out of the corner and what was a wild race for sure. The win in race number one here at the Cooper Tires Grand Prix of Mid-Ohio goes to Michael D. Orlando. Massive win, one driver going around. We have a spinner in the carousel on the final circuit as well. Who is that? Might have been Jackson Lee going down the order. Yeah, Lee going down the order as well. What a shakeup as Sooner Murthy ends up going out a couple of spots. Miles Rowe outside the top 10. So exactly what D Orlando could have been hoping for. De Alba battles his way up into 10th. Huge run for Salvador De Alba, but Michael D Orlando with the win. Denmark in second, Miller in third, Joel Grandforce comes home in fourth, but Joy Garg fifth, Liram Zendeli in the sixth spot, St. Jean seventh, Weir, Escoto, and De Alba. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about those last couple what, laps. What more could you ask for? Yeah, this, yeah you had a little bit of everything in this one. It was a wild one for sure. But again, when you think about the championship, Michael D. Orlando, who got a win in the front end of the double header, John, at Road America, but then had trouble in race number two. This is exactly what he needed. Yeah. Another big point haul, especially when you look at the fact that Rowe all the way down in 11th. It's still not going to kill his point battle, right? Sure, Because sure. to be honest, for Rowe, he's really battling it with Pizzi and Porto. He beat both of those drivers. Exactly. So he actually extends his game gap uh, in the championship lead over Pizzi, uh, who will likely still be in second, but we may actually see um, Grand Force, I think, could be into second in points right now. Yeah, absolutely. He was, yeah, because Grand Force was only, what, about five or six, maybe eight points back of Pizzi. This is going to change things in a big, big way. Yep. We may see Grand Force go up into second, but there is your top ten. D. Orlando, Denmark, Miller, Grand Force, and Garg, Zendeli, St. Jean, Weir, Escoto, and De Alba, the top 10.